but we do have doubles um, going on off stream right now. We have lots and lots of doubles matches. Oh, so much. So did you have like a favorite part of Little True City or Let's Play Game Expo as a whole? Um, I didn't go to LTC4 because uh, I was trying to save up for Super Smash Con, which is coming up in August. But I pretty much think my favorite part about the whole entire event in general was all the upsets that were happening. Oh, and it looks like we're getting right into a match. We didn't even get any time to introduce the players. Yeah. We have BB Zanzi and P2P McGivis. This team was actually did really well at LTC4. Um, I don't remember what place they got, but I know they did pretty well. Um, yeah, they were uh, just outside of the top eight range, I believe. Uh, they, I believe they got beat by Light and Highland. Yep. That's right. And then on the other side, we have Gurren, who I've never heard of, but we have... Jutsu, uh, Jutsu, of course, being the major pop-off mess we all know and love. Yeah, uh, pop-off master. Yes. Super pop-off master. If, if you come to, if you come to events and you hear someone yelling, most more than likely it'll be Jutsu. Yeah, probably, probably. But yeah, uh, Gibbous and, and Zan haven't been teaming together all that long. They started in February. With... Uh, with uh, Super Bit Wars, actually. Ex exactly. Uh, the big aspect of this is traditionally you'll be seeing Zan being the aggressor with, with Gibbous sort of hanging back. And uh, he's going to try to make the most of Aura as well as the Anubis strategy to deal some really big hits. And well, as you just said that, he got the first stock off Zero Suit with that, or with that V reverse Aura in the up smash. Meanwhile, Zan tried to go so deep for an edge guard. He's going to come up short with Blue actually getting stage control because of it. And there, go, and there goes Give us a stop off, knocked off by Jutsu with the up air. Jutsu's trying to get some, some early game pressure. You saw him get the grab into the forward air. He wants to rack up that quick percentage, but he's got to be cautious. Too much damage on Lucario without it being cashed out could be very well uh, the end of a couple of sucks. Because you do not want to deal with double rage Lucario because you have Oro and rage. That's not a very good combo you want to be dealing with. Down smash, hitting the, both. Wow. That sweep actually sweeping the first stock away from Jutsu. Sweep the floor and sweep that stock out of here. Jutsu trying to confirm the stock against Gibbous. Gibbous is trapped into the corner, but he has a lot of rage and a lot of aura to work we got, with. We got a hammer! Hello! Hammer time! In the meantime, on stage right, you're noticing Gibbous being thrown right off. That back throw from Ness, still insanely strong. One of the strongest back throws in the game. Zanzi nearly using the... Zandy nearly using the down B and nearly breaking his own teammate's shield, actually. Now you're noticing that Combine, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Gurin Gur is coming in with a lot of these aerials consistently, whether it's nares or down airs. And Red has responded by this by simply holding shield anytime he goes airborne because they're not afraid of the grab potential. And then you also have Zanzi, on the other hand, just crouching because usually aerial attacks won't work against Crouching Kirby because Crouching Kirby is just so low to the ground. Yeah. Like, you're tiny. You're minuscule. Now and this is actually the opposite of the of the stock count that Red wants. Ideally, you want to be having. Um, well, actually, hang on here. Now that I now that I mentioned it, forget what I said at the beginning. You want to see, generally speaking, Gibbous being the aggressor. He wants to be lower in stocks, higher in percentage, so that he can rack on. Uh, he can get the extra bonuses whenever he's down a stock. So now a back air from him. Yep, yep right there. You called and it. And did you notice how far? Gurren flew whenever he got hit by that. That was insane. That was insane. And you saw Jutsu following suit as well. Go for, the, for the roll up, he misses out. And Dead. no big punish. He, I mean, he's down by so much, but he's also playing way too aggressive. Red oh. is just trying to space around. And that's going to kill. Yeah, Gibbous has a free punish opportunity here. Just racking up a little bit of damage. Both on their last stock. And like we said again, he expected the downer coming. He just stayed still. And whenever you saw Gurren come in with the aerial, he was right there with the grab. These aggressive options, they're not helping Gurren. He needs to have the mix-ups if he's going to be able to make the comeback. He, he wants to get around both of these guys, but he's going to have to be careful with both of their really good offices. Because you have Kirby, who's going to put on a lot of damage, but then you also have Lucario with Rage and Aura just to kill off. Is that going to be... Good air dodge to avoid that up air, which I'm pretty sure would have killed. Oh, but he's not going to avoid that up smash. And give us and Zanzi take game one. It looked close in the mid. It was. But, but it really did come down to how much they were able to get off of that aura and the lack of mix-ups that we saw uh, from Jutsu and Gurren. Overall, they were playing 
too telegraphed, in my opinion. Yeah. They yeah. were playing well. They were just playing a little bit of the same thing every time to where eventually Givis and Zanzi found out that, okay, they're pretty much doing the same things over and over again. We're just going to wait here. We're just going to wait for what they're about to do because we know it's coming, and we're just going to get them from there. I wonder if Gurren's going to be able to implement the mix-ups that we were hoping from him in that last game. Zan. <laughs> and Zanzi <laughs> immediately takes Givis, and he's going to get the Aura Sphere. This is interesting. Now, Kirby's do have some really unique setups depending on whatever power they inhale. Uh, I want to see if Zan's labbed out Lucario's inhale to see if Kirby has some really sweet setups off of Aura Charge canceling. Try to go for the up air and back here. Misses out. I know. Gibb is being taken for a ride. Gets hit by Jutsu. That PK Thunder to the mix up that they needed to get on the board early. That And that was as early as you could probably get with the, get with the PK Thunder, too. Hammer? Nope. Not this time. He was ready for it. And the down air going to stop Gibbous from making a move on him. And then you have Kirby with a little bit of rage in that aura here. You probably want to be careful. Oh, nope. He taunts. He's going to get rid of that aura. And, you know, maybe he wants to take the power of, uh, of, of ZSS or Ness. Wants to have the ability to stop someone in their track so that Gibbis can confirm with a strong aerial. And the raw up B is going to get a huge punish, and that's going to be current stock pretty far up in the air. Zan doing a great job playing the passive role here. He doesn't want to lose a stock. He wants to make sure that Gibbis can make the most of the Anubis strat. Air from Jutsu. That's going to that's take the stock. Kill. So two quick stocks being stolen from Jutsu, but now he's in for a world of hurt. Like we said, at this sort of a percentage, you're going to be with this sort of stock deficit. Is that a gift? Yeah. We got to get, oh my god, he saves him. Yeah, wow. he shouldn't have wiggled out. He should have just let them go for the uh, for the double suicide. That would have been way better. The early aggression from Jutsu ends up making it so that Zan is able to actually hold his stock. And now watch the bears coming out from Gibbous. They're going to hurt so much. Jutsu, he's just holding shield. He is terrified he, he at is, this point. He's terrified of Lucario. I mean, Zanzi is just playing the excellent stop take game right now. Just keep it at high percent. And then Zanzi's just going to sit in the corner, and he's just going to say, I'll just hold these stops for Gibbous. I'll let you guys fight him over there. Again, Ooh. the early aggression from Gurren, and, and two quick two stocks. Two kills by Gibbous. My goodness. That's so quick. And there goes Anzi's stock. That's Finally. only his first one, though. We're still going to be seeing some very strong aerials. Maybe not as strong as what we just saw, but, man, those bears, they're going to be KOing around 50. Now, Gurren is really throwing out a lot of these upbeats, which are really getting punishable now because he – because now they're expecting him to just throw it out raw. And he's really doing that. He's just throwing them out very raw and very out there. So now he's just getting punished ridiculously for it now. Yeah, it's it's, it's not even like a question of whether he's going to land with an attack. It's just which attack he's going to land with. And he's really only been throwing out one attack this entire time, which is upbeat. Even stocks. Ooh, a counter, counter coming up, and Zen very wisely holding shield. That counter clipping both of the blue team members, but they have at least gotten Zan and Gibbous at the final stocks. Can they make a comeback? The, Zan says no. But the teammate assists to the kill with that, with the neutral B. And they're trying to set up a sandwich here, trying to make it so Gurren doesn't have any room to run. He's coming Ooh. in aggressively with the down air. No punish, no punish for the down there. That was for good. And throws him away, and Zanzi cannot connect that up yeah, smash. It felt like a bit, a bit of miscommunication more than anything else there. And there. neutral air, going to throw him off stage. And I want to be, I, I, I feel like this is an area where you might want to maybe space bears a bit better. Some cross-up bears would have been better from Gurren, but he's not going to have the shot. 2-0 oh, and a handshake in favor of Gibbous and Zan in that last game. Yep, that was a nice back air. Oh, yeah. 